WBA light heavyweight champion still, Dimitri Bivol. Thank you so much for joining us today on Pugs Corner. Look, Dimitri, I think that, you know, anyone who saw that fight uh, Saturday night against Canelo Alvarez, the thing that really, a couple things that really stood out were not only maybe the size advantage that you have had over him, but it was clear that you had trained your ass off for this fight, that you would put everything possible into the preparation for this bout. Can you talk about um, your mentality during your training in Indio, California, uh, how you went about trying to defeat the great Canelo Alvarez? You know, uh, it was uh, really hard mentally to, to fight uh, because uh, everyone uh, bet on Canelo. Uh, I knew it, but I just believe it. If my team believe, believe in me, I could win. If I believe in me, I I should win. And I'm the champion. Every time I told myself these words, and uh, I tried to be focused all camp. I didn't see uh, I, I didn't see some videos from uh, from my training camp, from his training camp. Uh, I tried to be only in real life, you know. Uh, I, I didn't uh, watch the Instagram or some uh, some media stuff. I I just trained and prepared and prepare against uh, just the challenger, just against just another another, another challenger, just another challenger, not against yeah. the king of pound pound pound. Yes. yes. It what, what, what was it that you did in, in training camp that you feel ultimately won you the fight? Was it just your attention to physical fitness and cardio work? Um, was it the sparring sessions that you had? I know you talked about that Saturday night after the fight. Um, or was it just that mindset? I know you've talked about this as well, that, you know, like it's basically me against the world. No one wants me to win here. What was the biggest thing that allowed you to win this fight? You know, everything, everything. And if I train uh, not hard, uh, it's not good. Uh, I wouldn't uh, want to fight. Uh, all of this, uh, train hard, not just train hard, train hard and smart. Train right and uh, be focused every time. Believe in yourself. All of this helped me. Yeah. Did you go out for like that? Give me a, a typical training day for you. I mean, how many miles would you run? How many rounds would you uh, spar? Uh, uh, I start my training camp uh, with uh, six rounds sparring, and most of. Uh, Sparrings was uh, eight, eight, ten rounds. Okay. When I woke up, uh, I had to run around two miles, sometimes three miles. Then I got a shower, uh, breakfast, and then I go to the sparring session. Uh, after sparrings, I had a massage or uh, some stretching around an hour or two. Rest, eat, and go to the another training, training conditioning. Great. It, it was like uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and more easiest day was uh, Thursday and Tuesday. I know some of the guys that saw you in the gym, I believe uh, Brandon Lee included, said that it was clear that you were a very determined fighter that you had prepared to the height of your ability for this fight. How, when you carried that uh, confidence into the ring, did you feel that you were going to win the fight uh, knowing that you were in peak physical shape? Or when was it during the fight itself where you said, I'm going to win this fight? Of course, it, it, during the fight, there <laughs> it's it the most 
because before I believe that I can, I, I'm, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I, I'm ready, you know, I, it's my time, I, I, I felt that, but uh, during the fight, uh, uh, I felt it more, uh, because uh, I saw his punches, uh, I tried to land the, his punches on my block, and uh, some punches I he just missed, and just, he just missed, and uh, it uh, made me more confident. How how much did you weigh on fight night? One eighty three, eighty four, maybe. Oh, okay, great. Now I I thought the now you obviously did a great job in blocking his punches. But I thought that the other thing that took place is, you know, because you've seen Canelo smashed up Billy Joe Saunders' face. Canelo, Canelo uh, knocked out Sergey Kovalev with that power punch. And then he, he broke down Caleb Plant. He did land some shots on you, but I never saw you flinch or really act like you were hurt. You were able to take his best punch. That's the truth, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he punched me a couple times, maybe five times. And the uh, couple uh, punches of, of this it was uh, hard yeah but but i got it and tried to be focused again and give him punches back yeah and and really let's be honest too dimitri i mean you did put on a boxing exhibition you outlanded him in every single round all 12 rounds your boxing was so superior that night um you have to feel so good about the way you boxed in there а не бокса, ты показал ему высший класс, потому что почти в каждом раунде больше в него пал, чем он. Yeah, yeah, I, I tried to win every round. I tried it. Uh, because uh, I, I know I, if I want to uh, win by judges, and I have to win every single round. But I, I did it with every single, but I tried it. And, uh, Потому что ты показал класс в плане бокса. And uh, yeah, you know, the boxing fans uh, excited me to show them my boxing skills. And he's a great, uh, great fighter. Like he's, he has a good defense, upper body defense. Uh, I missed uh, a lot of punches too. You know, but some punches I left him. And... Um. You know, it seemed like everything worked out so well off your jab. Your jab seemed to be seemed to be so important to winning this fight as well, because it set up. You not only were landing it, you were landing big blows off of it. Yeah, you know, jab it's like a wheels wheels for the car. You <laughs> have to <laughs> use your jab. It helps every time. In every in every fight, uh, and uh, I love jab. Uh, boxers use the jab. Uh, they, uh, it's most most important uh, punch, maybe you know. Yeah. It's much what, what we throw more than another. Yeah. So I mean, look. Um, like I said, congratulations on, on, on the victory. It, w it was a sensational performance. And I know there was some discussion afterward. You know, Canelo originally in the ring said he did want the rematch. And then afterward, he said, you know, look, we're going to need to see and, and talk about, you know, how what we want to do next. And I think one of, the, one of the things that came out is you had a conversation with um, Michelle Joy Phelps where you talked about, and Vadim, you can, you can talk about this as well. You know that you got you guys want to renegotiate a deal uh, for the, if there is going to be a rematch. You want things to be a lot uh, fairer financially, and you know, like walking in uh, uh, last and all that stuff. Can you talk about how dug in you are on trying to get a uh, a renegotiated deal that's going to be to your great advantage? <laughs> чтобы сделать uh, from, uh, first fight was important for me because I wanted to introduce me for the boxing fans and the second fight maybe I wanna prove it that I'm really better than him uh, he's the biggest name but I am better I could be better 
And of course, it's for, I can earn money more. For image. And so, uh, uh, I can earn more money and uh, I can uh, maybe I can get more attention. Yeah. I think very much it will be more uh, more attention to my and more respect. Yes, absolutely. Vadim, can I ask you a quick question? Uh, when it comes to negotiating this fight, I mean, obviously, I think uh, those in boxing would say you're never going to earn more money than you would by fighting Canelo Alvarez. You don't want to price yourself out of that. But so how do you go about trying to, you know, increase what you're making, but not, you know, be left with a fight that is, you know, probably going to pay half of what you'll earn against the Canelo Alvarez? Be honest, Lance. It's it's really not the goal is not to get something and, and try to you know take it overboard or or be unreasonable. It's more really about uh, having the fairness, the justice, the justice and the respect that he deserves. Because you know fighters that are fighting from other countries, international fighters, um, they get a lot of disadvantages coming into any fight. Yeah. You're talking. Sorry, you're talking. No, no. So, you're. Go ahead. The, 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 the disadvantages just have to be neutralized. That's what it's all about. It's really not about trying to, you know, gain or you know, be unreasonable and ask for more than you deserve. It's all about just having neutrality, and uh, that will be our goal with any fighter, with any, with any fight. Really, it's not only this rematch. Just to be reasonable and, and ask for uh, what the fighter deserves. Um, does that include uh, a, a more of a say in the judging? Because we know what the judges did, and three, you know, four, all three of them um, gave Canelo the first four rounds, which seemed pretty astounding to those of us who had it even after, uh, at least even after uh, four rounds. Um, or are you talking about be, hit the champion being able, able to walk in second? What exactly are you talking about when you when you speak of these the, advantages? The, the first part is important. The judges is important, and. To be honest with you, the commission in Nevada this time around was very, very good. They were very professional because we've had issues before. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, more disrespect than we should have had in certain other fights. I'm not going to say which ones right now. Um, but this this time around, it was actually very good. And all the people there, and they were very respectful. I think something's changed in the commission to the better. Okay. Um, the judges, you know, out of the judges that were available, for this night of boxing, for this fight, actually. I think we got the best judges that we could. And, and we, you know, we made some requests. We submitted some, some feedback to the commission. And I really think they paid attention to that. And they were uh, reasonable with that. And they kind of, uh, you know, followed our requests, which was great. But after all, and I think the panel was actually a good panel of judges from what I, from what I heard, from what I understand. I mean, all these judges are very, very respectful. And, and they have, uh, you know, they've done the, the top of the world fights. But at the same time, you know, when you're not when you're an underdog, there's always that little bit of an advantage that the top dog gets. Mm -hmm. But in this situation now, we just ask for neutrality. We would ask for neutrality, uh, and we would just ask for fairness and, and for the judges to be looking at the fight as a boxing match and not uh, a side b side all of that. You know. Um, you know, it's impossible to know exactly what Canelo Alvarez is, uh, is thinking and, and how he wants to move forward. Obviously, he was planning to win this fight and move on to a trilogy match against Gennady Golovkin. Um, in, in either your, your hunch or Dimitri's uh, hunch or feeling, knowing who Canelo Alvarez is, do you think he will be swayed to try to come back and try to gain a measure of revenge? Uh, by defeating uh, Dimitri in the rematch? I mean, or can he, as a, a champion boxer, turn away from it and say, maybe 175 pounds is just too much for me. I need to go back to my strongest division. What do, what do both of you guys think about that? Um, I'll, I'll also let Dimitri say his thoughts, but my thoughts, just to finish, um, I believe that definitely 100% Canelo himself would want, does want the rematch, and it's exactly what he said in the ring. From the way we see him, I think he's that type of guy. You know, he really wants... This was a challenge that he took, that he might not... Um, that wants to prove himself to the end. 
but I do believe that, you know, especially after the post post press conference, I heard that he kind of said, you know, I got to think about it and see. I said, uh, after he got back into the locker room, I think his team kind of told him, you know, don't be in a rush with the rematch and kind of give it some thought, you know, let's talk about it first. And I think the reasoning behind that is, you know, they just want to think on how they want to do it, when they want to do it, what way. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't say something like, you know, the weight is not right because you can't, you know, it was right for Kovalev, right? So, you know, once it's right for Kovalev, why would not, why would it not be right for another fight? And Kovalev is not, you know, Dmitry wasn't that much of a bigger guy, to be honest with you. I, I, I've actually tried to find out what the official weight for Canelo was. I, I haven't been able to look it up. But I don't think Dmitry was much, much bigger guy. I mean, obviously, Canelo came from a lower weight class, and you can't take that away from him. You know, that that gives Dmitry an advantage. But Saturday night, Dmitry was not that much of a bigger guy. And definitely, Kovalev's definitely not smaller than either of them. So, right. I mean, that, I think that's what's important. Yeah. And I'll let, I'll let Dmitry comment on that as well. Ты думаешь, что они хотят? Какая цель у канала? Он хочет реванш сам? Или какие у них вообще мысли? You know, of course, after fight, you want a rematch. In a in couple hours, you you are crazy after fight. You know, you you take time to think about it. Uh, but after fight, you, you can say, yeah, I want a rematch or I want a fight Joshua or something else you know? <laughs> because you're excited uh, yeah. but, uh, but, uh, you down. You down. but when you cool down uh, you try when you cool down you try to think uh, maybe it's not my weight class maybe I should fight again uh, maybe I should fight uh, in a different weight class Maybe I need one more fight uh, to get uh, confidence and fight him again. But of course he won't drink very much, but I don't know when and in which weight class. He's a champion. He's a champion in four division. Of course he won't very much. Uh, and, when when do you guys when do you guys want the answer by when do you guys need to hear from Canelo about what he's going to do? We know obviously that um, Archer Beaterbeev is going to be fighting uh, Joe Smith Jr. next month. That could be a fight for that you could take while Canelo maybe takes another fight and figures himself out, and you could stand as the undisputed uh, light heavyweight champion of the world. Um, what? But is there a deadline? Like, does he have to respond to you or invoke the rematch by a certain day, according to the contract? Uh, you know, most of uh, this, uh, I want to for Bell in right here. This is uh, this is this is my dream to be an undisputed champion. It, it's better way for me now. This is yeah. what I wanted uh, from my beginning of career. I wanted more belts. Um, is it, Vadim, can you answer that? Is there a deadline that Canelo has to get back to you on for the rematch? No, Lance, I, I, there's no deadline. Right now it's just a vacation, you know. Yeah. Right now the goal is just to get some rest. All of us, it's been a stressful month for us, you know. The, a lot of things we had to, to go through. But, uh, I mean, he, he can make his plans, uh, figure out what, what he wants to do. They need some time as well, from what I understand. There's absolutely no rush. You know, obviously, Dmitry, like he just said, he, he dreamt. You know, from the beginning, when, when we just started working, we were always talking about him becoming an undisputed champion at 175. And right now, there's a big opportunity to make that happen. If that happens, you know, if, if that's somehow... I mean, that's not an easy fight to make either, but if that can if that can happen, that's another option. You know, that's another option. And we'll, you know, we'll see. You know, hopefully, you know, I, I plan to come to the fight as well. And, you know, that will be an exciting fight too. Smith, the better be. You know, exciting. Absolutely. Sequence. Yeah. Now, I I had heard maybe uh, I had saw some kind of report where Dimitri said that he would actually be willing to fight Canelo for uh, to become fully undisputed 168 pound champion. Would you move down to 168, Dimitri? Uh, you know, be, before uh, before before coronavirus. When I was a little bit smaller, yes. Now I have to think uh, really hard about it because uh, on the last years I, I got some <laughs> some fat for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> growing, 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 growing. Yes. I grow, yeah. And, and, but it sounds good. It sounds good uh, to fight him again and for, for belts. And about my weight, I didn't have a problem before, uh, and now I didn't have a problem to make a 175. And on the fight, I was 184, 83 yeah. pounds. It's, it's not too big. Okay. And all, all my opponents were bigger than me, you know. Maybe 168 is my weight. Yeah, you'll, you'll just have to cross that bridge if, if, if it becomes a point of negotiation, I would assume, right? If he raises it as a, something to consider. Um, uh, the, the last thing is, uh, obviously, you have now been in touch with your family. You've been able to talk to your wife about your victory, and how is, how is that conversation for you? Yeah, it, it, was, it was great. My, my father wasn't be here, but he watched fight, and he was so, so happy, and my wife. They are proud of me. They are proud of themselves. They said, uh, "Everyone, congratulations to us!" Uh, and we feel it's like we won. You know? And my friends uh, tell me, told me the same. Everyone, congratulations to me. And they thought I won, and I feel like that. Are you going? Are when are you going home to Russia? Uh, today, today I'm going to home and. Maybe a couple of weeks uh, I came back with this. Okay. Oh, you are. When are you leaving? What day are you leaving? What day? Today. Today. You're going to I'm Russia today. today. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, I'll come back, I'll come back here to, to be here to spend time here with my family. Maybe, you know, okay. Maybe. okay, good. Are you going to go see uh, Beater B fight Smith? Will you be there at that fight? I think maybe I, I, I will see this fight. Yeah. Good. You obviously know that your country watched. That has to mean so much to you, that the whole country was watching and is, a, and is aware that you beat the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Yeah, you know, uh, they, uh, people from uh, all over the world, I think, uh, from Pakistan where I born, and from Russia, they are just glad that some guy who was under a dog won this fight, you know. I, I, I know it. Uh, I know these feelings uh, because uh, when I watched the fights, when it was uh, upset, I, I was, uh, you know, it, put, it helped me to raise, you know, to believe in myself. And I think my victory of belief helped to many people to believe in themselves. Absolutely. It was such a tremendous performance. It was clearly from the heart. Your, you know, your heart was on display that night, Saturday night. Congratulations on the victory, and please, safe travels to Russia and back here. We will see you soon. Take care of yourself and give that family a big hug. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. You take care, Dimitri. Bye, Vadim. Thank you. Bye-bye, Lance. Thank you very much.